boxes where you go right through them. That's really not satisfying. <laughs> he just slapped him on the back of the head. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> That's brilliant. I want to play Augur next. Like a lot of people, I've waited a long time to get my hands on Darktide, and my impressions from the beta are a little bit mixed. The gameplay loop is great, and if you've played Vermintide, you'll feel right at home here. They really hit the nail on the head with the atmosphere and soundtrack for this, but all of this was spoiled a little bit by the performance. On my first few games, I thought that this slideshow had the best soundtrack ever. Now, initially, I didn't want to start this video off with negative points, but I'd kind of have to put some context onto why the video footage I've collected is actually really poor quality. So let's just get it out of the way. Even after lowering the graphics settings, I still couldn't maintain 60 frames per second. Now, to be perfectly fair, I am running a 1060, and that's pretty dated by 2022 standards. But at 1080p, I don't think 60 frames per second on low graphics is a bit too much to ask. Maybe I'm a little overly optimistic, but reading online, a lot of people with more powerful setups seem to be having similar issues. Maybe the game is poorly optimized, and maybe that will change before release. Now, do I know specifically what optimized means in a game performance context? No, not really. I think it's just a blanket term that people use when the game performs poorly and they want to seem like they know what they're talking about, but they really don't. So, like me. So yeah, I can't say if the game will run better on the 30th of November. I certainly hope so. And if it does, then this game is like an auto buy for me. Or maybe I'll just have to bite the bullet and get it. A new rig i've been meaning to for a while i'm not gonna dwell too long on bugs i didn't see that many game breaking bugs and the only game ending bug i found happened on one occasion only i got downed and as i got raised my character kind of froze in this kind of medium state where she couldn't move and counted as downed but I couldn't take damage, so I couldn't fully die off. The end result was I had to quit the game. But again, it only happened once. Another one is where you get a reward and it tells you you've got a certain weapon, but then you go and check and you actually got a different weapon. Which for a limited time beta was quite frustrating. Considering we only had so much time to get to try as many weapons as we wanted, it's a bit annoying when the game tells you you've just unlocked the four staff, but you don't have access to it at all. Of course, this would still be annoying if it's in the full game. And that's a big if. Because this is technically a beta, there is a month and a half, we don't know what will and won't be fixed, so I'm not going to judge these bugs too harshly. Now the last one I want to talk about, I'm not even sure if it actually is technically a bug. But every now and then, getting shot caused the ADS camera to shoot way up in the air. It felt really jarring and over the top, but it was also really inconsistent. I don't feel like this was intentional, so I'm not entirely sure what was going on with this. There are smaller bugs, and I've heard online that people have seen some experience with a lot of bugs, but I didn't really feel like they ruined my gaming experience at all. Yeah, I'd be disappointed if they were all in the game at full release, but Fat Shark has a reputation for having a little bit of a rough launch, so yeah, maybe we might still have some of these bugs and maybe some more bugs at launch, but if Vermintide 2's life cycle is anything to judge by, the bugs will only be temporary. I'm sure the game will be polished eventually. If it's released or not, I can't say. Nobody can really. Except for Fat Shark themselves, of course. Now onto the game's good points, which is basically everything else. But the gunplay and melee combat is great. The melee in particular will be very familiar to people who have come from Vermintide 2. There's a number of games like this these days, but Fat Shark seem to have mastered the art of horde-based combat. It's hard to beat the feeling of cleaving through massive waves of poxwalkers. The way enemies fold and ragdoll from the force your weapons makes your attacks feel very weighty. The same goes for the ranged weapons I tried. They feel appropriately chunky for 40k, and can absolutely decimate enemy forces. As with Fat Shark's previous entries, Dark Tide does a great job of making the player feel powerful, while still making them feel like they have the odds stacked against them. The best rounds are the ones that you finish feeling like, how in the name of all that's holy did I actually survive that? The game is set in the Hive City of Tertia. If you don't know what a Hive City is, then picture the mega cities from Judge Dredd, a sprawling metropolis as far as the eyes can see. Now imagine they built that vertically until it breached the upper atmosphere. They're a giant living nightmare, and the further down you go, the worse it gets. Oftentimes they're overrun by violent gangs, like in Necromunda. And that's if you're lucky. If you're unlucky, something like a chaos infestation can happen, which is exactly what's happening in the story of Darktide. The maps really show off how endless feeling the scale of a high fleet actually is. Even running on my dated 1060, this is very impressive. Any 40k fan will be delighted with this. And even if you're not a fan, I think you could still appreciate these maps. And then there's the soundtrack. I'd be hard pushed to pick out a single thing I like most about this game, but the music is up there. It's got that whole techno rave and a cathedral vibe that 40k games often have. The Mechanicus game had a top tier soundtrack and this one gives it a run for its money. It gets really hyped up during big battles. 
which is cool, but those battles also seem to tank my frame rate, so it was a little hard for me to enjoy. Overall, the atmosphere in this game is top notch. I really don't think they could have done a better job. The dialogue is actually pretty good. From what I've heard, it's pretty well written. Characters do have a bit of banter in game, but because these are all player created characters, I don't think we're ever going to reach the levels of banter that we got in Vermintide 2, and I don't see myself getting as attached to my own custom created characters as I did to the Ubers Reich 5, but they're a hard act to follow, and the variety of voice actors and personalities that Darktide seems to be offering has its own merits. Now speaking of custom characters, their character creation is interesting. You do have quite a few options on picking the background for your character, but it's too early to tell if this will have any impact on actual gameplay, if any effect at all. The options for creating your character are are serviceable. They're pretty basic. You're not getting Dark Souls or Elden Ring levels of customization here. So if that's your thing, you might be a little disappointed. For me, I'm not too bothered, so it is what it is. The personality sections where you pick your character's voice. Both the voice and the personality that seems to come across are pretty distinct. Some are a little over the top, but across the board the quality is good. I went with a French sound and psyker myself. I should have known the enforcers would not tolerate me forever. Speaking of which, I spent the majority of my time in the beta playing as the Psyker. She's the single character DPS specialist, and arguably plays the most unique of any character in the game. For the folks that aren't too 40k savvy, a Psyker is someone that can draw power from the warp. These powers could manifest in any number of ways. The warp is kind of like hell, except it's a corporeal realm that people in 40k travel back and forth from. It's how mankind traverse large spaces in this universe. It works a little bit like the nether in Minecraft. It basically shrinks the distance, but it doesn't always go well. Sometimes ships get lost, for a long time and don't resurface again for thousands of years. There could be treasures on board, or there could be bad stuff. It's most likely bad stuff. Sometimes the warp spits a ship out in the wrong place completely, very far from where they want it to end up. It's a bit like traveling with Ryanair. Overall, the warp is a bad place. You want to avoid it if possible. Anyways, back to Psykers. They're considered dangerous, and with good reason. It's hard to control the war, and oftentimes it ends badly. They're usually not trusted, and they're often outcasts. The game does a good job of getting that across. Others in the team will often refer to the Psyker as freak, as well as some other comments just showing that they generally don't like them. With only limited time in the beta, and some of the content not available, it's difficult to surmise the scope of how the Psyker will actually play properly. I don't really know if they're going to have extra weapons, or if there's going to be more subclasses than this. The most notable and useful ability, in my opinion, is the Brain Burst. It's what this game calls a Blitz. Other characters have grenades in this slot, with limited ammo, but the Psyker you have a Peril Meter instead of ammo. The more you use War Powers, the more you fill the Peril Meter. Go too far and you die. This is basically the same as Overcharge in Vermintide 2 but a bit more forgiving. Filling it to 100% is an instant death, but more of a warning to stop using your powers for a little bit. Your ability, which is basically an ultimate, reduces your peril. It also knocks foes down in an AoE, but primarily I use it to just reset the peril meter and then get more brain bursts. The brain burst is your primary method of killing elites and specialists. It's a slow charging, high damage attack that makes the enemy's head explode. It's pretty neat. It makes short work of corrupted Ogrins and the Maulers. Using the Brain Burst to get kills also gives you warp charges, which is essentially just a damage buff. You can stack up to four, or more if you pick the right feats later on. Like in Vermintide 2, it seems like you have a lot of options to build classes in different ways. I primarily use Kinetic Transference to help build up toughness. If you like using warp weapons, then warp absorption is probably a good option. This is by no means intended to be a guide. In the entire beta, I only managed to get to the second tier of feats, but reading through the rest, it seems like build Building characters slowly over time will be a lot of fun. The Psyker's unique weapons are a warp sword and a warp staff. I didn't get a chance to use the latter of these, so I won't comment on it here. The sword is pretty fun though. You get a warp shield and a powerful push attack. It also has like a warp buff as an alt attack, which is decent if the leads get too close. It does a lot of damage, which really plays into the Psyker's role as single character DPS. There are plenty of other weapon options though for the Psyker that are shared among other classes. For me, the standout was the revolver. When I first saw it, I thought it would be like a middling starter gun that you just use as a stepping stone until you get something better. I was very wrong. This thing is a hand cannon. It over penetrates too, so it has some hoard clearing potential. And it's not even the biggest hand cannon in the game. The Ogren carries around a giant novelty break action shotgun. It's comically potent. When I wasn't playing Psyker, I spent most of the rest of the time playing Ogryn. He's a big bully of a character, and he beats the absolute daylights out of all of Nurgle's minions in this game. He can stagger even the biggest of elites and bosses. <laughs> He may not have the highest DPS, but he's extremely tanky, and he has no issue keeping everything around perpetually staggered and knocked down onto the ground. He might not kill a mauler very fast, but remember, if the mauler can't stand upright, 
He cannot hurt you. He also carries around items and quest items really fast. Overall, he just plays exactly as you would expect. As a side note, Ogrens are not known to be that intelligent. The dialogue shows this off pretty well, and depending on your personality, it's pretty charming. The Empress sees your good work. Need ammo. This over, boss office. Bad much, is it? I'm on your side, Ogren. Yeah. Not me best there. One other thing I love about the Ogren. Where the Psyker has her brain burst, the Sharpshooter has some regular old grenades, the Zealot has stun grenades, and the Ogren just lobs the entire grenade box at the enemy. It's incredibly satisfying to watch. <laughs> And I think that's a good word to summarize a lot of what's great about Dark Tide, and even Vermintide too before it. It's satisfying to play in so many different ways, from mowing down massive hordes of poxwalkers, making maulers' heads explode with a psyker, or just battering lads with a box of grenades. It's a good time overall. Now I don't want anyone to mistake this for a proper review. This is more just me rambling about a game I've anticipated for quite a while, so I'm not going to say outright if I recommend this game or not. Gameplay wise and atmospherically, it's fantastic, but it is quite difficult to estimate how much content will be actually in the full game that was missing here, and some of the technical issues do worry me a little. The game is releasing in a month and a half, maybe they'll iron out some of the issues by then, but only time will tell. Either way, I've been editing this video a few days after the beta ended, and to be honest, I miss playing. It was a lot of fun, and I can't wait to play a bit more. Anyways, if you've made it this far thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video i'd appreciate a like and subscribe if you haven't already anyways good luck a while